Well, it's given you deterministic uh, measurement of every tool. When a tool is dull, you have an exact number now, you know exactly when that tool is dull, and you can use that number over and over again. So it gives you uh, much more predetermined uh, life of a tool. You don't have people just randomly saying, I'm gonna change the tool right now because I think it's maybe dull. We're here at Machine Fest 2023. I've got a very special piece of technology to share with you from Karen Engineering. Um, but first of all, we're going to talk, Rob, a little bit about the, the, the variables in the machining process. If you're trying to pinpoint a problem with a tool that's breaking, you're trying to manage tool life or improve cycle times, there's a lot going on in the machining process that, that can change day to day, right, Rob? Yeah, there's just so many factors. You know, the, the tooling from the vendor changes, the material, different vendor materials, even material from the same vendor can change. The coolant flow may have been degraded because nobody changed the filter in the pump. The coolant concentration changes. The temperature in the building changes. The list goes on and, and just on and on. Who can figure out which one's the problem? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, how would someone pinpoint a problem with a tool breakage or with trying to improve tool life on a certain tool normally? How would that be done? So, right now, somebody has to go and look at all these different you know, parameters and kind of take a guess at it. Sometimes they just say, I'm just going to change the tool but it may not have been the problem. It may have been something wrong with the coolant. So it's really, really challenging for someone to look at all these different situations and determine which factor actually caused the problem that happened today. And that must be excruciating if you're trying to leave post-it notes around for operators to fill in stopwatches and spreadsheets. There is another way, and you're going to show us some technology today that's absolutely fascinating. I've not seen a demonstration like this in a while. Um, let's. Let's go with it. What kind of demo are you going to show us? And then please hit go. Okay. So I'm going to show you our TMAC system, which stands for Tool Monitoring Adaptive Control. It has two major components. One is tool monitoring, and the other is adaptive control. And I'll kind of explain as we're going along and the demo runs which part is taking place at each time and how that is actually benefiting the uh, user. Sweet. So you're running uh, how many processes on the robo drill, and what are you going to show with them? Well, we're going to show TMAG is monitoring the power of the tool as it's cutting. We're looking at a one millimeter drill cutting right now, a very tiny tool, but you can see that the magnification of TMAG allows you to see that drill as it's cutting. And on the vertical axis, we're seeing what? We're seeing power. <clears throat> oh, and okay. and here, is... we've got a bigger tool. This is a larger tool, not very big though, but still showing a much higher power signature as it's cutting. And the this power is a is... tap now that's cutting, and the tap is only monitoring the forward cutting of the tap we're ignoring all the spindle reversals because those are, as you can see, are high power surges. Yeah, so you can see it's spiking up when the spindle accelerates and exactly. decelerates those RPMs. Now we're doing an adaptive cut where you see power on the left, but you see feed rate override in percentage on the right. The green line is the target that we're trying to achieve. So you can see that as the power approaches the target, the system automatically reduces the feed rate. When it's below the target, it's gonna keep the feed rate as high as possible. This is a cut where we're actually looking for the to cutter to stay within a certain path. If it goes above or beyond or cuts too much or too little power while it's cutting. Is it cutting it too goes, little right now? It's, no, it's staying right really... inside the window still, oh, okay. but, but it's getting close in a few spots. Wow, so this is like live statistical process That's control right. on the process itself. And here we show adaptive control again where you can see the feed rate is being changed. We're trying to target that green line, which is the optimal power this tool should cut at. Wow. And you can see the, how quickly the system reacts, reacts as it starts to that feed rate in that purple line exactly. as it goes over the, the yep. power. And now it. it's doing a bearing analysis where we take a five second snapshot of the vibration of the spindle. We do our own algorithms that determine the health of the spindle bearing. And when it's completed, we'll actually see the chart. The chart shows the health of the spindle. On the right hand side. On the, on the uh, right hand side. So the acceleration is the bearing health. The velocity are things like stiffness, looseness, uh, misalignment, things like that. So if you're in the green, you're good. The, the data is tracked over time, so customers typically do this once a week. They can look at the rate of change of that over time and determine health of the spindle. The amount of technology you've just demoed in two minutes, less than two minutes, yep. is amazing. Also, it's amazing how slick the user interface is. The demo that you programmed, obviously, you put a lot of work into it as well, but just how slick the user interface is showing live data coming from the machine tool. now. We've talked about the problems associated with variables in a machining process. How does this help? Well, it's given you deterministic uh, measurement of every tool. When a tool is dull, you have an exact number now. You know exactly when that tool is dull, and you can use that number over and over again. So it gives you 
uh, much more predetermined uh, life of a tool. You don't have people just randomly saying, I'm going to change the tool right now because I think it's maybe dull. Um, you're also looking at the effects of things like the coolant's been reduced, the material changed. All those things affect the tool and it changes, but the power signature is going to show you how those changes affected the tool itself. So for absolute process control, it's almost kind of like a scientific lab in a machine tool. Um, you've got to check out Karen Engineering. Absolutely. Thank you.